Good day, fellow investors. You probably already know Peter Barklin, head manager of the Niche Masters Funds. We already made a few videos and you can find them all in the description below. So on the crucial topics when it comes to investing. And one topic that confuses a lot of viewers is, okay, value investing, what it is, and the key is, okay, I see value. I recently did a video on Tata Motors that everybody was pointing out this is value, this is value, the stock is down 60%, even if it boosted the P ratio, P ratio of just nine a few months ago. So how to avoid investing in value traps and what is actually value when it comes to investing? Is it a low PE, low price to book or how to make this value investing much easier than all the difficulties that it showed uh, around and people I'm sure don't really know what is value investing. So please, if you could share us your view on value investing and how can we make it easier for our viewers to understand what value investing really is and how to avoid, of course, the loser, how, how not to lose money. What's the margin of safety? Okay, that's a broad question. But, but so first of all, value investing defined, uh, the central parts of that is uh, the recognition that there is a difference between the price of something and the value of something. And what value investors do, or at least what they say they do, is to pay a price for something that is worth more than that price. And therefore they make a margin, the bigger that margin is, they call it a margin of safety sometimes. Um, the more likely they are to be able to sell this investment in the future, they believe, at a price that gets closer to that value, the, as they estimate it is. So the price is very easy, because the price is just the share price. The value, of course, is completely elusive, and two people will not agree on it, except when they trade a stock. At that point, they, they by definition, agree. Uh, so you have to make your own judgment of what you think something is worth. Uh, and people use all sorts of different ways to do that, but the technical, mathematical way is easy to start with bonds and to just say a bond that is a hundred dollar bond, which pays a 10% coupon, means that this bond pays a 10% interest per year. And you can calculate then what the value of that bond is, because it should, it's probably more than a uh, hundred because it pays an interest that is higher than what you can get from other investments. So if you, if you put in your alternative interest rate of say 3% uh, and here this bond give you 10%, then instead of buying it for 100, you buy it for maybe 130 or whatever the price is as it comes out. So with a bond, it's very easy to calculate the value mm -hmm. because there's only one variable and that is that interest rate, the alternative yeah, interest yeah. rate. With a stock, there's a, or with a share a company, there's a whole hundreds, if not thousands of variables and the interest rate is, uh, is just one. And the most important one is how, do you, how much cash flow do you expect this company to generate in the years ahead? And uh, now it's back to you because now it's your, your footwork. You have to go and look at the company and say, what do they do? Uh, what market are they in? Is the market growing? Do they need to grow faster than the market? Um, are there any technological uh, hindrances or ceilings for where they can go? Uh, is it depending on a, um, on a um, patent running out at some point in the future where the prices will drop? It, it, uh, the list is simply too long yeah. when to go on about it, except you have to have a view of that. Then you, you, you input that either into just your, your mind or you can use a spreadsheet and you say, hmm, I think this company looks surprisingly cheap uh, relative to what it is producing and mm -hmm. what it is likely to produce. So, so, uh, so I, I'll buy it. And that's what, I mean, that, that's the uh, basics of the value investing. But, but then, but when, when you look at, you read the Wall Street Journal, for example, and they'll say this year value investors did better or worse than growth investors. But the way they calculate that is by looking at value in uh, defining value investment as low prices. So, yeah. for example, the price to earnings ratio of a company is really a pricing measure, but, but it is called a valuation measure. This company is valued at, no, it's not, it's priced at this okay. particular yeah. price. So, uh, 
so, so when when a statistical agency says we we see how big a return investors in low priced stocks got and then call it value investing they actually make a leap of faith because it is not certainly not in my opinion value investing because value investing is also like in in our definition is you know companies that are high quality and will be more expensive than the average company but which we still believe we can buy cheaper not cheap cheap yeah but uh, but 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 uh, let me give you a, a straight example if you buy a, a company for a price earning of 7 and it turns out to be only worth 5 then 7 is expensive if you buy a company to a price earnings of 20 but the value turns out to be 25 then you have made yourself a value investment yeah, uh, in, in my opinion except in march of 2009 or uh, and then know, uh, 2002 and then, yes. where when those companies also trade at the low uh, yes but they didn't all go to 7 yeah, you know yeah, yeah. if they, if 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 they range from 10 to 20 they may end up ranging from 5 to 15 so yeah, they all yeah, move yeah, up yeah, and yeah. down and then sometimes there are unique uh, opportunities in individual companies uh, but certainly um, y you know you would have been been really well off if you had invested uh, if if you had not been invested at all going into 2007 and then you have put your entire fortune into stocks in uh, March 2009. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but that's that very easy to say in hindsight. Yeah, 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 yeah. And in practice, we can't do that. Yeah. So, so yeah. when it comes to value investing, so we have defined, okay, the cheapest stock that are priced cheap, the cheapest in the market, not valued the cheapest. So how to, do you differentiate? Uh, so we already differentiated it. So it's not the cheapest, it's the quality. But how do you time that? Okay, when am I? So I have a great company. It has a price earnings ratio, earnings yield. It's a quality company. How do you time your investments? When do you say, okay, now I'm going in? Does it matter? I don't know that we'll have a recession or we are at the late part of the economic cycle. How do you deal with that and value? Okay, so, so the, all the macroeconomic factors yeah, yeah. Uh, I more or less ignore. Okay. Uh, because we want, I, I have to assume that investors in the fund have made a decision that when they put money into this fund, they expect it to be invested in equities, in yeah, stocks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I should not make a decision on their behalf whether they want to be invested or not. By putting money into the fund, they have said, we want to invest in stocks. It's up to them to say, I think I now rather prefer bonds or gold or, or something else, or not at all, or cash, you know. But aren't so you afraid that investors will make the wrong decision or that's up to them? I have to add, I, I, that, that has to be up to them. The, yeah, yeah, the yeah. broad decisions of do I want to be in stocks, bonds, uh, precious metals and uh, commodities, energy, uh, real estate, etc., etc. That has to be up to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, th there are other th there are private banks and investment advisors that will help people make those decisions. We specialize in stocks. But for example, if you wouldn't, if you would think about the macro, then probably in 2012, 12, 13, when you started the fund, there was the euro crisis, Greece. So there was a, people forget about it that there was a lot of problems. But you still invested, and that's what has brought to holding those companies that yes. you have yes. now that have uh, multiplied yes. incredibly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so we have to ac simply, okay, that's the stock market as always, invest the money that you don't need, accept the volatility, take advantage of the volatility, you reinvest those dividends and the companies can buy back shares at a lower price and that's simply the stock market. Should I conclude like that? And Sven, in practice, uh, what also happens is that when we have these, this little list of stocks, that, or the portfolio that are in the fund, uh, we'll, we see some in, in incredible rise, price rises from time to time, which almost always leads us to sell some of those positions, yeah, uh, yeah. if only because we have to, because they can only get to a certain size. That means there's always money to invest in the fund. And then we constantly scan the others uh, not only the positions we have, but also the positions we would like. And it becomes a relative, uh, you know, I cannot say for sure I, when I buy something that I buy it really, really cheap, 
but I can say that I buy it cheapest among equals, yeah, yeah, cheapest yeah. among the other opportunities so I have at that moment. So you practically constantly balance those positions yes. Yes. in the portfolio, which yeah. probably adds the return over the long term and lowers the risk. Uh, Hopefully, because yes. you always have cash to buy more if yes. the opportunity presents itself. All right. Thank you for explaining how different value investor value investing is and what are the dangers of actually being a value investor and how to balance around that value uh, in your portfolio, which is, I think, very, very valuable and how, do you, how you do it in your uh, niche focused value investing uh, fund. Sure. Thank you, Peter, for sure. this series of videos. I'll make them all in a playlist so you can check all the videos about what we talked about, return on invested capital, how to find great stocks with um, Peter Barkling. And if people want to know more, there is always a link in the description below where they can uh, contact you and uh, see more about the fund or whatever you uh, sure. do. Well, thank you for this uh, inter thank interesting you, experience. Uh, thank you and I'll see you in the next video.